Hello everyone, welcome to my Civil Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to get notified when I post my new videos. So today I'll be discussing the concept of loss of friction. In my previous lecture series, I had discussed regarding uh, definition of uh, friction. It's uh, uh, important terminologies used in the definition of friction. And as well as uh, we had uh, also studied types of friction. So basically, uh, frictional force is the resisting force which is in the direction opposite to the direction of motion of the object. So coming on to first law, uh, first concept of this lecture series that is loss of friction. So first law of the friction states that the frictional force is always tangential to the contact surface and always acts in the direction opposite to that which the body tends to move. In order for easy understanding of this law, I have came up with the diagrammatic illustration over here. So wherein W is a self weight of the object which is resting on the surface and uh, p represents the uh, p represents the external load uh, which is pushing in nature results uh, in the results in the object uh, to its motion uh, along the direction of the applied load so therefore the second sketch represents the free body diagram of the overall uh, uh, overall load patterns so here w is a self weight p is the load applied and mt is a motion trend so always the motion trend follows the direction to which the load is applied and f is the frictional force so this is a frictional force which is developed between the contact surfaces that is the contact surfaces means the surface of the object and the surface of the uh, surface of the another object uh, to which the body rests so uh, due to the microscopic undulations which are present in the uh, in the contact surface there is the there will be some resistance offered uh, due to the undulations due to the undulations towards the uh, towards the motion trend so therefore uh, that force will always be in the opposite direction so that force will always be in the opposite direction which is termed to be as a frictional force and always uh, in the tangential direction tangential direction to the contact surface so this is the first law of friction so coming on to the next law is that the limiting frictional force f maximum the limiting frictional force f maximum uh, is always directly proportional to the normal reaction so limiting frictional force is nothing but it is a maximum amount of resistance or it is a maximum amount of frictional force which can be developed by the material is called as the uh, uh, limiting frictional force. So limiting frictional force is a frictional force which can be developed by the object to its utmost extent is called as uh, limiting frictional force and it is uh, denoted by F maximum. So this is a free body diagram of the load pattern. So wherein, wherein by the knowledge of the previous lecture series, we had studied the uh, coefficient of friction, which is nothing but the ratio of the ratio of limiting friction to that of the normal reaction. So by using that concept, so uh, yeah, mu will be equal to f maximum divided by n so upon cross multiplication f maximum is equal to mu into n wherein mu is a constant so therefore uh, the this is the proof for the second law wherein f maximum is directly proportional to n so f maximum is directly proportional to n as the limiting friction increases the normal reaction also increases so Coming on to the third law. So whenever, whenever the uh, body is at rest, the frictional force developed between the object and the, uh, and the surface of rest is called as static friction. 
whenever the object is in motion so then that type of friction is called as uh, uh, dynamic or kinetic friction so whenever uh, the object is at rest the limiting friction is most is at the most means the degree of limiting friction is maximum so whenever the object is in motion the amount of limiting friction decreases because due to the application of load there will be creation of motion trend and the total amount of friction developed due to the uh, uh, against the against the motion trend will be uh, will be nullified means some part of the of the frictional force will be nullified due to the due to the action of the due to the action of the motion of the body so therefore the kinetic friction will always be less than that of the static friction so therefore the third law states that for a body in motion the kinetic frictional force is always less than that of the static frictional force so always as as we know that from the second law uh, f maximum is equal to mu times of n so as f maximum increases mu also increases so therefore the coefficient of static friction with that uh, application we can uh, straight away tell that as coefficient of static friction mu s is always greater than that of coefficient of kinetic friction so this is the third law of friction coming on to the fourth important law of friction is that the frictional force always depends on roughness of the surface and material in contact so coming on to roughness of the surface as in case of friction uh, uh, the roughness is considered on two surface simultaneously so first is with that of the surface roughness of the object and second is the surface uh, roughness of the uh, uh, surface roughness of the uh, object to which the body rests so here as the roughness of the uh, surface increases as the surface roughness increases so the frictional force will also be increased and therefore there will be increase in the there will be increase in the uh, in the uh, limiting friction also so therefore always the frictional force is directly dependent on roughness of the uh, surface contact surface of the uh, overall structure so next is that the frictional force is always independent of area of the contact surface uh, uh, area of the contact between the two surfaces so whenever when you apply the uh, load onto the onto the body uh, whether the body if at all if it is resting on any of the uh, any type of the geometrical shape so whether it is uh, square triangle rectangle or a uh, circle whatever it is it doesn't depend on the area of the surface but instead it depends on the surface roughness of the specimen specimen's surface so the next law is that the frictional force is independent of speed of the uh, speed of the body so as we have noticed in the second law and third law that is the limiting friction exhibited by the static uh, static condition as well as the kinematic condition so as we all know that the limiting friction is the maximum amount of frictional force which the body uh, will exhibit so de uh, depending on the kinetic or the dynamic uh, kinetic or the static friction so whether uh, the body moves at uh, slower speed or higher speed so that will be the maximum amount of friction which the body can exhibit so therefore the frictional force will always be independent of the speed of the object so this is the sixth law of the uh, friction so these are some of the important laws of friction wherein the frictional concept is uh, uh, where the frictional concept is explained
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब द वीडियो थैंक यू